What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is Friday. It's time to kick back because the weekend is here. And so is the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns. And you're definitely going to want to stick around and see those from all the major Fang Stocks. This week, we've got big news coming out of Apple. We've got a lot of movement in these stocks. Better not waste any more of your time. Kick things off like we always do with Meta Platform. So the week at 349, slipped down earlier in the week, down to about 340, bounced to back, ended the week roughly flat or about up 1% to finish the week at 351.95. Now, a mega cap route is the January consensus, according to Bank of America. Anytime you have consensus coming into one side, last year it was the recession it was a market crash or one that sustained itself through the course of the year. Right now, I would say one of the biggest consensus is Bitcoin will benefit from some kind of ETF. Well, look how well gold prices have done historically after the evolution of gold ETFs. Careful what you wish for over there in crypto land and careful what you wish for in terms of a mega cap route, because if it doesn't materialize as all these companies are actually reporting their earnings, over the next couple of weeks, that will certainly move the stocks one way or another. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta and the founder, sold $428 million worth of Meta stock at the end of 2023. Understand, at his tax bracket, he's taken home a still a healthy chunk of change, but about half of that amount. Moving on to Apple, start of the week at 187.55. This stock slips sliding down. From a technical perspective, you'll see it makes a lot of sense. Down about 3.4% on the week. Finished the week at 181.18. The company is still leading premium smartphone sales with its market leading iPhone, but its market share is starting to slide. Last year, had its 75% market share of those high-end cell phones. That has slipped down to 71%. Data is showing that China, India, and the Middle East are seeing increased demand for those premium smartphones as consumers in those regions get better jobs, higher wages, can afford a more expensive phone. How Apple materializes and how Apple capitalizes on those, quote, emerging markets, if it can't capture large percentage of market share there or it loses market share in those nations, could have a big impact on Apple stock. Now, Apple, Alphabet, Broadcom, NVIDIA, and other CEOs to meet with the EU antitrust chief next week. Now, the chief has a strict line on mergers and acquisitions. My guess is that is what they are going to be going over. But at the end of the day, the corporate lawyers seem to get these things across the finish line more often than they don't. Microsoft could soon supplant Apple in terms of the world's most valuable company. Shouldn't come as any surprise as Microsoft simply has been firing on all cylinders recently. Foxconn, which manufactures a large portion or almost all of Apple's products, saw that their Q1 revenue drop even as those Q4 sales tops estimates. But still, those Q4 numbers are down year over year, even down sequentially as well, showing there is still some waning demand for electronic devices out there. Now, the iPhone 17. Folks, we are currently on the iPhone 15. We will get the iPhone 16 sometime later this year in the fall, but the iPhone 17 said to get a, quote, huge camera upgrade. If that's all we get from Apple, then not only Microsoft and Amazon, but maybe several other companies will surpass Apple at some point in terms of market cap. You got to do more at some point than just upgrading the camera. Moving on to Amazon, start of the week at 150 69 slipped down about 3.6 percent finished week at 145.24 amazon snagging a disney ad executive amid its streaming ad push this is on the heels of the company charging an extra 2.99 every month for your amazon prime video unless you want to see these ads that are going to pop up now analysts already chiming in saying that the new amazon prime video ads should boost margins over at the company and boost some revenue. Certainly, there's going to be some people that are totally hooked on Amazon Prime Video. They'll pay the extra $2.99 or they will sit through ads and make the company more and more money. Now, holiday online shopping, if you're like me, you barely made it out and shopped. You pressed buttons 
and those Christmas gifts showed up at the door magically. Adobe reporting that a 4.9% year-over-year increase should be good, obviously incrementally for Amazon at this point. They've got so much revenue, something like this, not that big of a deal. But you look at downstream, you look at like a Shopify, certainly like from an ad perspective, uh, probably like a Pinterest, maybe even a Snapchat to a certain degree. Down the funnel, this growth certainly probably growing a little bit faster than at the top. Now, TikTok has got its sights set on Amazon. If I had a nickel for every time somebody had their sights set on Amazon, over the past couple of years, I probably own a big chunk of the e-commerce giant, but I do believe that TikTok should grow its e-commerce presence. I know that they partnered with Peloton uh, today to create some content and Peloton stock skyrocketed. At the end of the day, Amazon is still a platform for e-commerce. If you are going to sell items on TikTok and you are going to start to sell 10, 15, 20,000 units a day, or even just a couple hundred units a day, chances are you're probably gonna actually use Amazon to have a lot of the fulfillment and the shipping of those items. So at the end of the day, even if TikTok does grow its e-commerce presence, in a lot of ways, might actually help Amazon. Moving on to Netflix, start of the week at 478.87. This stock down about a percent, finished the week, we'll call that $474 per share. Who are these young ladies? Well, reportedly, they're eyeing revenue push in video gaming. If you've been on Netflix recently, you'll see there's Grand Theft Auto games. There are also some other developed games around. I'm assuming this is some kind of show on Netflix and they're developing these video games. But what the company is trying to think of is ways they can make money off this. And I was listening to something today on Bloomberg. Obviously the two go-tos are you charge a little bit of a premium for some of these games. Maybe there's a freemium model where you start out playing and for $2.99 you get uh, more coins or whatever it is. There's certainly that model. There's also charging more for a gaming tier inside Netflix. Doesn't look like they're going to go that route or you're just layering on advertisement in these games. And I tell you what, those in-game advertising, very effective, very creative from a marketing perspective. You get a lot of clicks. A lot of conversion on in-game advertising because oftentimes you're having to sit through or watch an ad in order to advance a level or get a special token or whatever it is inside the game. And so those ads tend to perform relatively well. We'll see where that goes for Netflix. Moving on to NVIDIA. Start of the week at 482.05, up 1.85%. Finish the week, we'll call that at 491. NVIDIA could generate a hundred billion dollars in free cash flow over the next two years. I tell you what, they could do it in a single year. I mean, considering their gross margins, I don't think it's going to happen in a single year. I think this is probably shorting the companies, or at the very least, this is about where the company should come from an expectation perspective. Factor in $100 billion of free cash flow, $1.12 trillion market cap or somewhere in there. And you're looking at a company that's not wildly overvalued. Now, ASML stock, ASML is a lithography maker. You couldn't make any NVIDIA chips or really any high-end computer chips for that matter. Without ASML, that stock dipped briefly this week, although over the past six months or really the past month or so, it's been on the rise as ASML is siding with the United States government, refusing to sell some of its high-end lithography equipment into China. There is a war between China and the U.S. right now, and it is over semiconductors. And right now, right now, the United States is winning that battle. Mobileye had a weak Q4. Mobileye was spun out from Intel. I think Intel still retains a, a fair portion of this company in terms of its earnings and its retained ownership. Mobileye specializes in autonomous driving technologies. Doesn't surprise me. Look at the automobile market. Relatively soft considering where interest rates are and considering where inflation is. A lot of these cars just simply cost too much money, in my opinion. And so you're seeing a slowdown there. Mobileye went from $40 per share all the way down to about $30 in a single week. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at, we'll call that $372, down about a point, finish the week at $367.75. Microsoft could supplant Apple as the world's most valuable company. 
probably will do it maybe within the next week or so. This is a very important news cycle as Microsoft adding Copilot AI button in its first big change to PC keyboards in decades. Apparently they're gonna be leading this technology off and maybe showing it off next week at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. I'll be sure to snap a photo of that. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram down below. I'll be posting as many photos and videos here on the channel as well as humanly possible. But this goes along with what we've been saying really all year as it relates to AI. It is playing out like the internet, playing out like the personal computer. So it all starts with hardware. It started with NVIDIA, AMD to a lesser degree, Intel as well. You need that physical hardware in order to layer on eventually software. So you have hardware, then you go software. That's your Microsoft, that's your Salesforce, that's your ServiceNow, that's a number of other different companies out there providing software. Then it starts to get everywhere. Your mom, your dad, your grandpa starts calling you, asking you about AI, adding these co-pilot buttons to PCs. Also, Dell is rolling out a new XPS line of laptops with built-in AI. So we're moving from hardware to software to eventually everywhere with AI and these types of things brings it to the masses. Now, moving on to Tesla, start of the week at 240, 632, down 3.6% 3 nearly, finish the week at 237.49. Now, Tesla's Tenemade EV sales surged in December, capturing over half of the global deliveries in 2023, but that's not the story most people focused on. They talked about how BYD, I believe it's called, is shipping more cars in the country of China. China is so big and so gigantic. Tesla is playing more kind of the, the higher end, the premium, the Apple, if you will, in terms of EV sales and other competitors there are racing towards the bottom when it turns to pricing. But China made EV sales in that country for Tesla just, yes, you have some brief moments where they kind of fall off. Some of it has to do with retooling of the factories, but for the most part, you've had steady demand for these EVs in China. Some of them, again, get exported out of that great country. Now, Tesla were to call 1.62 million vehicles in China. I tell you what, the liberal media loved this headline as it is slightly deceptive that they were calling literally every car that they've ever made in China. And the vast majority of reporting I saw tended to focus on that and talked about how their market share in China is slipping. But keep in mind that this recall is an over-the-air software update, which is fairly common, to be honest with you. Now, Fisker pivots to a dealership model to meet demand for its Fisker Ocean. Company is moving to an asset light strategy, very similar to the other car makers, where you just simply manufacture the car and then you offload essentially the responsibility onto dealerships to then try to sell those. But then you get into these things with dealer incentives. Sometimes maybe the dealership's not representing your car brand like you would like to. We'll see where things go. Fixed skirt though makes a very solid product in my opinion. Now, 2024 electricity volt or jolt, I guess. I guess I can't read on this Friday, but this is actually pretty big news. There were far fewer models can qualify for the full tax credit. So right now here in the United States, you can get an instant $7,500 consumer tax credit. Now, in the past, you would have had to like file this on your tax return and and look, if you don't pay a lot of tax or you didn't have $7,500 tax liability, this didn't really do a lot for you. But now what they're allowing you to do is this is almost like a dealer incentive. You're able to just whack $7,500 off the price of the car right at sticker and you're not having to deal with the IRS or TurboTax or any of these types of things. It's actually a pretty big incentive in my opinion if you're in the market for an EV. Well, you had several models, about 25 of them that were on this list that could receive this $7,500 tax credit. But after further investigation, the number slipped to just 13 because part of the rules inside of the quote Inflation Reduction Act or the Inflation Reduction Act, it's hard to say because it really doesn't make a lot of sense, but there are some things inside this bill that I actually like. It's forcing these companies to make these cars here in America. And if you have certain China made manufacturing, particularly when it relates to the battery, if too much of the car is being made in China or other countries, well, all of a sudden it doesn't qualify for this tax credit. So I actually like that. And for Tesla, which is, I believe the most American made car in existence, the, the most parts of a Tesla are made here in America, 
their models are still qualifying for the tax credit. Now, I did notice that I did skip over Google. My apologies. As the company started the week at 138.67, we're really sloppy here on this Friday. Google slipped down about 2% this week to finish the week at 135.73, and I'm not being lazy. The company really didn't have a whole lot of news this week. Moving over to the technical segment of the show, the SP 500 topping out at a very logical point. You've made higher highs really for the last year or so in the S&P 500, really a bit longer than that by about a year and four or five months or so. I told you, I think on last week's show, you get rejected at this area at the beginning of the year. Don't be overly concerned. We're moving into earnings season. There's no, there's no reason to believe earnings won't be good. Now that doesn't mean Wall Street will reward companies with higher share prices, but considering where inflation has come and gone, considering where unemployment is, and that's relatively low, considering where interest rates are, which yes, they are high from zero, but still historically four or 5% interest rates are not really that high. There is no, literally no indication that earnings won't be anything but ordinary or acceptable, or maybe in some cases, be actually pretty good for most companies. So a pullback in the S&P 500 should be bought. You get any opportunity south of 4,420, you probably should uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it a little bit. Now, moving over to Meta, looking beautiful, higher highs, higher lows, pulled back to top of trend and actually got a bounce there. I would expect Meta to retest these highs if their earnings, which should fall in about two weeks time on the 31st of January. You get somewhat decent earnings and guidance. This company should bounce to all time, back to all time highs above 375 or so. Apple making the reversal that I think we all thought was possible. You're making a beeline down to an area right here at about 175, 180. If you're dying to get into Apple, that's your first opportunity. Moving on to Amazon, you are just kind of splitting the range here on an uptrend that has really been intact since December of last year. So more than a year uptrend for Amazon. You're sitting on a bed of support. Amazon reports their earnings on February 1st. Still got a couple of weeks to go. Wouldn't surprise me though. You set up at the bottom of the range for Amazon. All the cost cutting Amazon has done. We saw positive momentum in terms of their earnings from their e-commerce business last quarter. If that continues and you get this pullback on Amazon south of 140, I think you got to step in there. Moving on to Netflix, beautiful uptrend. I mean, you've been in a very steep uptrend really since May. It started to flatten out in December. Again, these are last year. Pullbacks in Netflix south of, I would call it about 400, probably should be bought. NVIDIA just simply cannot get above 500, but is consolidating very nicely at this levels pullbacks in NVIDIA. Now, the thing with NVIDIA is they're the last to report. They won't report till February 24th, but you will get uh, Intel, AMD, and other chip makers reporting before that, TSM more notably as well. We'll see what happens with NVIDIA stock over that course of time. Google also getting rejected at a very logical spot, but an area where you're not at all alarmed. You know I love my technical patterns, and this is what this stock is doing. Higher highs, higher lows, pullbacks south of we'll call it 130 or so on Google. So you're actually pretty close on Google, can be bought. Microsoft's in the most unique position. It's still technically in a very, like a very steep uptrend. The momentum with everything is on the side of this company. If you already own Microsoft shares, you're, there's no absolute, it's giving you no reason to sell from fundamentally or technically any pullbacks on Microsoft. Uh, really should probably be aggressively bought. And then finally, Tesla also in a very unique position. You're making lower highs, both in the intermediate term and the shorter term. You've basically been sideways on this stock for, we're coming up on about three and a half years. You're looking for a decision day with Tesla. You really would like to see this one get above 290. You get above 290, 300 on this one. That is signaling a buy. You could rally from 300 to 400. A break lower likely brings south of 175 back into play. That probably should be bought 
as well. Folks, that was Fang Stock Recap Show for Friday, January 5th. Now, next week's show will probably be delayed either late on Friday, very late on Friday, from a, especially from an East Coast or an international perspective, but potentially I might have to push it over into Saturday. We'll see how things go. It's a travel day for your host here. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful weekend, a safe weekend. If you're in CES, if you're in Las Vegas next week, hit me up. Social links are down below. We'd love to meet anybody that is out there. Until then, have a great weekend and good luck with your investments.